<laughs> Let's get serious, Dan. Yes. Welcome to Cold Food Butterfly Conservation TV. And today we're doing a butterfly that's extra special to you, isn't it, Dan? Well, it really is. We're looking at the Southern Swallowtail, Pipello Alexanor, the icon of our organisation. That's right. So tell us some of your experiences with it. Well, it goes back to 1976 when I came here with my father. We went up on a moped into the mountain. And that's when I first saw my first Southern Swallowtail. That must have been an amazing experience. Oh, so exciting. Right, so what was your next encounter with it? Um, well, actually, it was virtual because it was through a website, not a website, a Facebook page in 2014. And I put up a photograph because I didn't know whether or not it uh, survived the intervening period. And the very next day, someone put up a photograph and said, look, it's in our garden. That's just incredible, isn't it? I think it shows how important the Corfu Butterfly Survey is. You're absolutely right, Anne, because the Corfu Butterfly Survey will enable us to discover exactly what's going on with this insect. Well, until this time last year, of course, we didn't even know that this butterfly was on the western coast of Corfu, did we? That's right, and it's amazing to see them flying around us now. Yeah, the weather's particularly in our favour because, of course, it's sunny with cloudy intervals, and uh, that means that the butterfly's flying when it's sunny, but also resting when it's not. I mean, actually, just like exactly. that one there now. Oh, Ooh. well, that's great, isn't it? It really is. Obviously, really freshly emerged, Dan. You know. Look at that amazing yellow colour. Yeah, and we know that that means that this is the male, um, but of course the females are very, very much paler. That's right. I like the way it's resting in the classic pose with the wings open. Yeah, you know, I've never ever seen this butterfly rest with its wings closed. Yeah, that's right. Should we see if we can get any more? Yeah, let's find some more. Anyway, I think we've been quite lucky really to see so many. Oh, and look at that. That's a fantastic view, isn't that it? That is stunning. And it shows how close we are to sea level. Yeah, and uh, well, when you think about it, we used to think that this butterfly was restricted solely to mountains. That's right. I used to expect to see it only on Mount Pantocrator, and lately we've been having sightings at sea level. Yeah, well, actually, you know, all the way along the uh, western coast, there are patches of hills, aren't there? So, you yeah. know, th that's not surprising in some senses. But, you know, when you think about it, that kind of underscores the fact that we still don't understand the ecology of this butterfly very well. And it goes to show that we need more and more records to, to, to learn more. Yeah. Shall we uh, go on? Let's go. Isn't it amazing to watch the butterfly egg laying on the host plant? Well, it is, and this is perhaps opportune because look at this. This is Scaligaria napiformis. It's a white flowering umbellifer found widely over the island, and it seems to be the preferred uh, host plant for this butterfly, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. And of course, uh, we have found it on another umbellifer, oh, a yellow flowering Apopomax, but we don't know exactly what species that is. It's amazing that the, that such a large caterpillar could actually get sustenance from such a thin plant. You mean from this one? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, amazing. I totally agree. There's hardly any leaves on it whatsoever at all. I've heard if they get dust, but they actually can eat part of the stems. And of course, they move on to another plant when, once they've finished one. Yeah, of course. Anyway, should we move on? Yeah, let's go. Wow, look at all this host plant. Yeah, no wonder the butterfly is abundant here. Well, it's getting quite cloudy now. Conditions are playing in our favour. Yeah, and actually, look, that's exactly what we were looking for. Ooh. Fantastic. Now, yeah, fantastic. Clearly, what's the first thing we notice about this? That she's pale. It's a female. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but the thing that was in my mind, well, we did say it earlier on, didn't we? But the thing that was in my mind, look at those tails then. What does that say? Well, I think probably a bird must have attacked her. They're not in a good state, are they? No, they're not. No, they're not. So, you know, hopefully she's still good enough. I'm sure she's good enough, in fact, to fly. Yep, I hope in the morning she'll lay some eggs. Yeah, fantastic. But we're just getting a little bit worse for wear now. Certainly is. Maybe yeah. we should get going. We should, yeah. <laughs> Actually, Anne, I think it's getting a little bit uh, uh, cloudy, and I think that was some rain I just felt then, so we should probably wrap I up. I think so, and the butterflies have gone to roost now. Yeah, and you know, that's my cue to say to you viewers, you know that we're doing this because we want you to record butterflies for the Corfu Butterfly Survey, and in particular, the Southern Swallowtail. So we need your records on the website. Yeah, and of course, that's www.corfubutterflyconservation.org. And it's been great. It's been a fun day out, Dan, thank you. Yeah, and thanks to you too. <laughs>